Next, let's go through the analytics that we collected from this campaign that we ran, that sample campaign for Keep Calm and Drop Your Gear. And to get to the analytics, what you have to do is after you log into your account, you have to actually type in a specific link at the very top. So what you want to do is just, uh, so you have to be first logged into your account and then make a new a new tab in your, in your browser. And up here type analytics, analytics, dot teespring.com and then you want to press enter to go to the analytics and so I'm just gonna I got a lot of uh, campaigns in there I don't want to reveal to everyone so I just want to show you this one right here this is the one that we just did so I'm gonna go and hit analytics there and in here we can see all the details of that campaign so we've got uh, total orders placed just once and like the conversion rate is just horrible like you want this to be up like five to ten percent sort of thing and that's just not good and you see the um, so here you can see the orders over time and also the views so the blue line there is the total views if you just mouse over you can see how many views we got and then the orders so then we know how much we made we can find our EPC or earnings per click sort of thing I can also use the data we got from our bit.ly link, you know, how many, still 72 right now. But you can use that information to figure out your earnings per click, but really what you want is high conversions. You want this sucker to convert, right, <laughs> into sales. So let's keep looking. This is hourly information. And they show views and orders by hour of day. So you can see when you uh, when the order came in came in at one o'clock here today okay see the number of views per day there by refer okay then we have our get data which is something I want to look at here now when we were looking at the ads it appeared that the the paper post engagement like the post engagement one post page in, or page post engagement I always get those mixed up for some reason that I figured was the best remember we went through that that ad there here's all the ads in the in the manager here the uh, PowerPoint I just gotta get it into view there we figured that the page post engagement ad was probably the best giving us the highest click-through rate but these clicks are not clicks to the website they're clicks of anything so people clicked on the photo people clicked on the uh, a like button the share button the comment anything like that that's all those clicks but then these other three campaign the other three ads were in a campaign for clicks to a website and so remember we tracked all of those <clears throat> so if you look at the first one you remember when I created that link I added the FB equals PP1 right here for that uh, page post that we did on the actual fan page. So anyone that clicked on that link will know how many clicked on that from our analytics. And then inside these ads, you remember we added that add additional optional URL tag here. So add one, and then add two, and add three. So now we can see the analytics for those. And in here, you can quickly see that the total views will be will basically be the number of clicks. Well, we can quickly see that A1, this ad here, got the most clicks, like pretty much twice as much as anything else, like way more than this one, even way more than a post pa the page post engagement. So that tells me that I should have actually went with this particular ad. Remember in the other video there I talked about how I I uh, stopped that one ad I stopped all these ads here and then I kept the one running I should have actually kept this one running because that's the one that brought in the most traffic to the page and you need traffic to the actual page in order to make sales so most likely this is where the sale came from and the conversions were not as high but you could see that you got more clicks. Now it, it makes sense really because if you think about it the objective of that campaign was clicks to a website. 
So what Facebook will do is when they, they list your ad on Facebook, they see that your objective is at clicks. So what they'll do is they'll show your ad to uh, people within your audience that have a, have a history of clicking on things. It's, and more specifically, clicking on links that go outside of their website. So of course you should get more clicks to your website if that's what your objective is, right? But sometimes the page post engagement will work a little better simply because if your shirt is something targeted towards something really passionate, then it would work a little bit better. This one may not have, have enough passion in it. It was sort of just a humor kind of thing applied to pilots. If it was a lot more passionate, like um, something to do with sports, right? People are so passionate about sports. For example, uh, that other shirt I have in here, like it says, win, lose, or tie. I'll bleed black and gold until I die. You have to be really passionate about the Boston Bruins in order to wear that. And I'd, what's kind of funny, I actually made a massive mistake with this with this T-shirt, and it's kind of embarrassing giving, given I'm Canadian. You know, Canadians are supposed to be the hockey fanatics of the world or whatever. Well, I'm the one Canadian that doesn't watch hockey that everyone else does. I enjoy it, yeah, but it, I, I don't watch it all the time here there. But basically... It says win, lose, or tie. Well, the NHL doesn't allow ties anymore. <laughs> so that was such a such a stupid thing on my part. I didn't research enough, and I suffered for it. So I think I lost like over $100 on this campaign. So maybe even more. I'm, I'm not sure. I didn't look. I was so mad at making that wrong decision, that mistake. But we all make mistakes, right? But anyhow, what was kind of neat about that campaign, actually, I noticed that females were buying. And that tells me that the reason why females were buying the most was maybe uh, don't um, I'm just guessing here but maybe they don't know the rules of the game or don't remember that there's no more ties or something like that that could be could be an idea or could be the reason but obviously I don't know for sure but I'm just guessing that's why females were buying the most because maybe they didn't realize that there's no ties allowed in um, the NHL anymore and in fact the, the way I found out <clears throat> was in one of my ads, someone put tie with a question mark. And at first I thought they meant like a tie, you know, you put around your neck for a business suit, you know. But I figured, you know, Teespring doesn't sell ties. So I was like, ah, I just ignored it. And then someone else did another comment about, uh, you know, there's no more ties anymore or something like that. I'm like, oh, my goodness. I slapped my face and just I couldn't believe it. And I stopped the campaign because that's why it was losing. But my point was, in the beginning before I say all that, was you have to be super passionate. Like, just think about it. Like... If you think about it, this shirt is actually did pretty good given the fact it was wrong, but there's still people passionate enough that either didn't care that it said tie on there or they didn't know. So it shows you there's potential for selling a shirt in that niche that's similar to something like this. So anyhow, so what I'm getting at is that post page, page post engagement I'm going to get that right one day. Page post engagement is really good for something like this, but not for this, as we can see. So I just wanted to show you some of the stats here. And so what I want to do right now, actually, is go back and just stop that campaign because there's no point in me running it anymore. So I'll just go right in here and, and just deactivate that account so or that ad so it's not running more. If I was going to run one, I should go in here and run the uh, ad set one here that's the one that was bringing in all the traffic it said 19 clicks and this is 25 so it's not quite matching up properly but that's the one that seemed to bring in the most clicks And if you go down here it also shows you the products that were purchased so that shows you how many tank tops and also down the bottom here if you can see it also detects how much uh, activity is going on in Twitter. So there's nothing going on in Twitter right now but my my shirt. In fact, if I actually take this, uh, right click and copy, head on over to Google and let's search that. Oops. Uh, it just comes up in my, oh, look at that. My link is somewhere in here. Interesting. Let's go back. Where was it? Oh, drop a gear. 
Okay, it's just found a drop in the word gear. Okay, cool. Anyways, I thought it was showing up on someone else's page, but it wasn't. So that's um, how you can view the uh, analytics, and it comes in really handy, especially for the get variable, so you can actually track right down to anything you want. You know, you can add any key variable in there too. Like in the power editor, what we did here is we added that. We can add more if we want. You can, you can add um, an ampersand or whatever that is, and add another variable if we want. Like say this one was interest, so we can say i n equals. Um, what was the interest for this one? This one was job titles. So we can say J T for job titles. So and then in our in our analytics, we would see that in here. We would see the actual variable F B, and then we'd see another variable that said I N, and then um, the value would be J T for job titles, and we see how many clicks. So you can add more variables in there if you want. I usually only add one variable so it doesn't get too confusing for myself. And I just add one variable and you can just add stuff to this data here like say um, this could be add one set one and then underscore interest could be job titles JT so as long as I know what what all that means and when I see that in my analytics I'll remember where that is or I can go back to my power editor and see where it came from and that's really important to really pinpoint stuff because if you think about it I thought most of the clicks came from that page post engagement based on the analytics from from uh, Facebook, the stats there, but in reality it actually came from this ad here. So it's really important to use this data in combination with also using the data from from Facebook.